All right, here we're trying to get the final speed of this vertical Atwood machine by using energy instead of by using forces and accelerations and kinematics. Um, I think it, would, it actually is going to be quite a bit more efficient than using the force, acceleration, and kinematics method. So I've got my heavier mass 50 centimeters off the ground, and then it pulls the system down 50 centimeters. Uh, this mass goes up 50 centimeters and I'm trying to figure out the final speed. So one thing I want to get in here before we do anything is that that one kilogram mass is moving at exactly the same speed as the three kilogram mass because they're tied together with a, a string that presumably can't stretch. So they're always moving at the same speed. In other words, this guy has kinetic energy and that's a really common mistake to forget the kinetic energy of the second piece. Um, so just broad overview real quick in terms of energies. I see the potential energy of the three kilogram mass going down because it's dropping to a lower y coordinate. The gravitational potential energy of the one kilogram mass actually goes up. But there must be a net decrease in potential energy because I also have kinetic energy for both masses at the end of the process. So I'm going to start writing down changes in energy for everything. And what I'm going to do for the analysis, for the analysis of the one kilogram mass, I'm going to say that it started at y equals zero, and it went higher. It ended at y equals 50 centimeters or 0.5 meters. So I hope that makes sense. If the three kilogram moved downward by 50 centimeters, the one kilogram had to move upward by 50. Uh, then I'm going to do my analysis on the three kilogram, and I'm going to I'm just trying to look at the center of mass, I guess, roughly speaking. I'm going to say the initial height. Let me put initial and final on these just to clarify. The initial height of the three kilogram mass was 0.5 meters, and then the final height. I'm calling zero. So I had a reduction in the y-coordinate. Potential energy went down. That's an energy source for us in this problem. And then, of course, each of these has a kinetic energy of 1 half mv final squared. And their initial kinetic energy was zero because it started from rest, which hopefully I remembered to say in the problem. I probably forgot. But if I forget, then you can assume it starts from rest. All right, so let's look at energy conservation. We're starting to get a little bit more general now. We're recognizing that this statement, as long as there's no friction, this statement is true even if I have multiple interacting objects in the system. My total mechanical energy is constant. All right, so E initial. If I look at the initial height of that mass, so I'm going to call it, maybe I'll just do it symbolically real quick. I have the potential energy initial of the one kilogram mass plus potential energy initial of the three kilogram mass. There's no kinetic energy, so I'm all out of ideas. That's all my sources of mechanical energy in the initial state. In the final state, I have the potential energy final for the one kilogram mass, potential energy final for the three kilogram mass, plus everything is moving, so I have one half m, let's call it m1 to indicate the one kilogram mass v final squared plus one half m3, that's the three kilogram mass, v final squared. All right, and then the way I've set up my coordinate system for potential energy on each of these, my final y coordinate is zero for the three kilogram mass. So its potential energy, mgy, is going to be zero. But my final uh, potential energy for the one kilogram mass, well, it has a y coordinate of 0.5, so I'm going to have to write in that term. My initial potential energy for the one kilogram mass was zero. But my initial for the three kilogram was not zero. It had a y coordinate of 0.5. All right, so plugging in the formula that the potential energy is mgy, I'm going to have. I'm just going to go ahead and put in numbers now. Initial potential energy of the three kilogram mass, m 
g y and then the um, the final potential energy of mass one is going to be a one kilogram that's m g and it's now at a height of 0.5 and then i i can factor some stuff out of this i have a one half v final squared they share the same final velocity times m1 plus m3 so one kilogram plus three kilograms all right i'll go ahead and just start smashing numbers together so three times 9.8 times 0.5 i'm going to subtract from that the numbers in this term so 9.8 times 0.5 And it comes out to 9.8, if I haven't made any mistakes. I think we're cool. One plus three kilograms is four. Um, four over two is two. So I get um, V final. I'm going to do 9.8 divided by two and square root it. And I get 2.21 meters per second. All right, so it would be a good exercise to redo this by, by actually solving a system of equations to get uh, the acceleration of these two masses and then using the acceleration and the distance to figure out the final speed, and the two answers should agree.